Bonjour, hi, my name is Elizabeth. I am the bureau chief for the Darcy McGee Writing Office. Uh, bienvenue, welcome, <laughs> au quatrième édition de la remise de médailles de citoyenneté de Darcy McGee. I'll be your MC for this fourth edition of the Darcy McGee National Assembly Citizenship Medal Ceremony. I'm so pleased to welcome Mayors Brownstein and Steinberg, Lawrence Bergman, Robert Libman and her marks who couldn't be with us this evening, Councillors Ruth Kovac, Mitch Kajavsky, David Torjman, Michael Goldwax, um, Jamie Fabian from Anthony Housefather's office, and Marguerite Bourgeois School Commissioner Sarita Benchipa. <laughs> Excuse me. The National Assembly makes available to its members a handsomely cast medal that can be bestowed on writing residents by the local MNAs. Soon after our government's election in April 2014, our MNA, David Birnbaum, announced a formal and rigorous process to decide up, on to, up to three medals to be bestowed annually in the riding, and that is why we are here today. Now to get us started, I'm pleased to call upon the Mayor of Cote St. Luke, Mr. Mitchell Brownstein, to offer us a few words of welcome. Mr. Uh, so, yeah, I, I, it's great to be here with uh, David Birnbaum and former MNAs, Robert Libman, Lawrence Bergman, we're missing Mr. Marks. You know, this initiative, when I heard about this initiative three years ago, I thought, what a wonderful idea. What an amazing idea to be able to recognize people for all the good work that they do. The city of Cote St. Lucas had a tradition of doing just that. We have our volunteer recognition evening where we give out prizes for all types of categories. We give medals out for our emergency medical service individuals to do exceptional work as, as volunteers. And every month we recognize our employee of the month. You know, having this event right here in Cote St. Luke, in Ashkelon Gardens, is really special. Because this place, as you'll see, we, we redid our bricks and we changed our windows and we have a new, a new um, sculpture that was donated by Dr. Harry Rosen. And uh, we're going to have the unveiling for that sculpture very shortly, but you're here to see it first. It was just installed. And it, it's called Reliance. Reliance is very significant because we as individuals rely on each other. And these medals that are being given out today explain just that. In life, we rely on our spouse and on our family. We rely on our friends. We rely on community. We rely on, on the city to provide facilities, services, and programming. We rely on our hospitals. We rely on our schools. We rely on individuals who are giving of their time to create a better world. Et on est très fier de ce que vous avez fait pour nous. Les, les candidats qui sont uh, nominés et vont gagner ce soir sont des membres de notre communauté qui ont fait du bien dans les organisations importantes pour nous et aussi je, sais, je, je connais ces personnes très bien but I'm not allowed to say their names because that's for later but I've had very close relationships particularly with two of them going back for most of my life and and I know what it means to be a real volunteer and to want to give to your community so having this award ceremony right here in Ashkelon Gardens in Cote St. Luke is really special and I look out to many of you who have done so much for our community you know Mayor Bill Steinberg I see you there and, and Michael Goldwax and the councillors and the volunteers and former MNAs and people who have served in public office or has as individuals you make our community great so thank you for all that you do congratulations to the winner and to all of you thank you for being here enjoy the rest of the evening Thank you, Mayor Brownstein. Today's winners have been chosen, as every year, by a blue ribbon jury of former members of the National Assembly. Justice Herbert Marks, former Minister Lawrence Bergman, and former Equality Party leader Robert Libman. Of course, Dr. Victor Goldblum was a member of the jury before he sadly left us two years ago. Allow me to call upon one of our jury members, Robert Libman, to offer a few words on the selection process. Mr. Libman. Thank you, Elizabeth. Ça fut un honneur pour moi de faire partie du jury encore cette année pour la sélection des récipiendaires des médailles de citoyenneté de Darcy McGee. 
un programme qui a été développé par David Birnbaum en 2015. Le jury, comme vous savez, est composé d'un groupe restreint, d'une petite fraternité des anciens députés de Darcy McGee, notamment Lawrence Bergman, Herb Marx et moi-même. J'ai été le troisième dans la succession des cinq députés qui représentaient notre comté à l'Assemblée nationale depuis sa création en 1965 et qui a élu son premier député en 1966, le Dr. Victor Goldblum, suivi par uh, Maître Herbert Marx en 1979. Darcy McGee is a writing that many of you know has stood out proudly over the years. It's an extremely unique writing in the intensity of its orientation and the political convictions of its residents, especially when it comes to Quebec sovereignty, when it comes to the Constitution, when it comes to minority language rights or international affairs, Darcy McGee has always stood out among writings in this province. In fact, both Quebec sovereignty referendums, of all the writings throughout Quebec, Darcy McGee had by far the strongest opposition to Quebec separation. In fact, in both 1980 and 1995, 96% of residents of this riding voted against separation. And I remember the first time, one of the first things that Jacques Parizeau ever said to me when I spoke to him in the National Assembly was how this riding, the riding of Darcy McGee, resembled in some ways a dictatorship when it comes to elections. If you look at some of the polling districts in that 1980 referendum, there were votes 176 to 0, 192 to 0, 173 to 1, which shows the determination and conviction that this writing has on this important question. In the 1992 Charlottetown constitutional referendum, Darcy McGee had the highest percentage of votes in favor of any riding by far in the province. And even in 1989, it also went off on its own in protest over minority language rights and the use of the notwithstanding clause by the government at the time. As you know, there were four equality party ridings that were elected in that year. And in this riding, we had the highest percentage of all the equality party ridings. And it showed again in that moment of time that this riding was ready to take a stand on a very important issue. So what can possibly illustrate the essence of a natural community more than this? And as you know, many of us are troubled by the fact of what's about to happen in the upcoming election when it comes to the riding boundaries. According to the law that determines the criteria for electoral divisions, one of the most important objectives is to represent natural established communities. And that's why it's such a shame that for the first time, Darcy McGee riding that we've all known since 1965 for the past 53 years will no longer be the same riding, will no longer be the same natural community that it always has been. Unfortunately, the Electoral Commission has permanently changed our borders starting with this upcoming election in October. So I just wanted to mention that, and it's something that I know many people in this riding are troubled with. And speaking of elections, people often ask uh, what to do in this upcoming election in October. Should they start flirting with uh, another party that's out there? But I can tell you that in this riding, we have an MA who knows and understands the issues that affect our community, and he stands up forcefully to represent our concerns in the caucus, in the Liberal caucus. I worked very closely with David Birnbaum for the past 20 years, first when he was at Canadian Jewish Congress, now he's at the Brith, then he was at the Quebec English School Boards Association. He is someone who I've always admired, his conviction, his substance, and his awareness of all the issues, and his commitment to the issues that affect our community directly. And to discuss tonight's event, I have to say that his initiative in creating and developing this award, the Citizenship Medals Program, is also a very valuable contribution, creating greater awareness in our community of all the great members of our community, of our riding, that have made significant contributions that have impacted and enriched the lives of people in our community and in our riding. As far as the process is concerned, every November, residents and organizations in the riding are invited to submit nominations for this competition. The contest is publicized in local media, on the websites of Coatsy Luke and Hampstead, and through mailings to community organizations. So on behalf of the jury, I suggest that we spread the word as much as we can in order to cast as wide a net as possible so let these awards be well known and so every year we can have a vast and credible and strong group of candidates as we did this past year. 
Lawrence Bergman, Herbert Marx, and I carefully reviewed this year's submissions, and we made the tough decisions about the three laureates who will be presented to you in a few seconds. So let me just end on one last note. I'd like to say thank you to Herb Marx, who unfortunately couldn't be with us tonight. He's ailing. I just wanted to mention one quick anecdote. Herb Marx, uh, who had resigned just before I was elected in the 1989 election, he resigned when the government also invoked that notwithstanding clause. When I was elected as a young architect in my 20s, I really didn't have much, I didn't know what politics was all about. And I remember Herb Marx called me into his house, into his basement the morning after the election in 89, and he taught me what it's all about, taught me about politics, being an MA in Quebec uh, from A to Z. And I will always respect and admire Herb Marx for that, and it's very unfortunate he couldn't be here with us this evening. So in conclusion, chapeau encore à David Birnbaum et au nom du jury. Je félicite tous nos gagnants cette année, les récipiendaires de médailles de citoyenneté de Darcy McGee. Félicitations à tout le monde et merci encore à David Birnbaum. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Lipman. All right, let's get down to business. To present our medal winners, please join me in welcoming the member of the National Assembly for Darcy McGee, Parliamentary Assistant to the Minister of Education and the Minister of Higher Education and President of the Montreal Caucus, David Birnbaum. Merci, Liz. Uh, thank you, Robert and uh, Jacques Perezo. I am uh, the latest dictator of Darcy McGee, David Birnbaum. Come from a long line of proud Democrats. Thank you very much, Monsieur Perezo. And it's great to see Lawrence here and, uh, and Robert as well. Monsieur les maires, Brownstein et Steinberg, Monsieur, Mesdames les conseillers, uh, conseillères municipales, les représentants de la Commission scolaire Marguerite Bourgeois, ainsi que les, Madame la Commissaire. I'm really proud to be here. As, as Lawrence and Robert can tell you, there are moments as an M&A that are not always uh, that much fun. Uh, there are challenges, uh, there are the family sacrifices and so on, but there are also the rewards. Uh, les moments où on a l'opportunité, le privilège, en tant qu'un des 125 membres de l'Assemblée nationale, à faire des choses qui font du bien à nous personnellement et aux communautés qu'on a le privilège de, de servir. Je crois qu'on est aussi conscient comme représentant, peu importe le niveau, de, le palier du gouvernement, que notre rôle est restreint aussi. I think we understand, and when we don't, it's time to move on, that our role is deeply important and we're privileged to be given that role by the electors, but it's also limited. What makes communities tick is people like you and people like those laureates who we will honor today. People involved in civil society who give of their time, whether professionally or as volunteers, to make things happen. I think all of us, uh, Mitch is a mayor, Lawrence is a former MNA, uh, Anthony Housefather if he was here, Le Premier Ministre du Québec ainsi que du Canada. Our job is to set the terrain so people like you can make our society work. We grease the wheels. We get the bureaucracy out of the way. We set the conditions that allow people, those of you who choose to play a leadership role in some way, in all kinds of diverse ways, and we have three wonderful examples today. We need to set the conditions so that you can make a difference. That's what we do. And what you do on the ground each day is change the lives of people, enrich their place in their communities, help their kids fully participate, assurer que les gens les plus démunis, vulnérables, ont la chance, l'opportunité d'atteindre leur plein potentiel. C'est ça que vous faites. And I, in this small way, have the great privilege of allowing us together as a community to recognize what you do. Donc, alors, c'est avec grand plaisir que j'ai à présenter nos trois lauréats. On va commencer avec la directrice de l'École des Amis du Monde, un vrai leader, une source d'inspiration et de mentor pour plusieurs communautés d'élèves, de parents, d'enseignants à cette bouillonnante école primaire de la Commission scolaire Marguerite Bourgeois dans le de saint luc Durant son mandat, Lina s'est faite une mission 
de créer une école positive et inclusive pour ses élèves, une école ouverte au monde et prête à accompagner chaque élève dans un parcours bénéfique, alors qu'il s'efforce d'apprendre le français en plus des autres matières, y compris l'anglais. A community beehive, les journées de la paix, a national assembly visit, dance days, and aboriginal cultural discoveries are only a few of the milestones that Lina Fortin has put in place at this lively and welcoming school. À la grande distinction de cette école est en grande partie grâce à Lina Fortin, l'école des amis du monde est reconnue dans le réseau des écoles associées à l'UNESCO. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our first Darcy McGee National Assembly medal winner tonight, Madame Lina Fortin. Alors, bonsoir. Wow! Quelle belle reconnaissance! On ne voit pas toujours l'impact de notre travail chez l'autre. J'ai toujours prôné l'importance de faire une différence. J'ai débuté ma carrière en enseignement dans une école à Ville-Saint-Michel, un milieu plurithnique et socio-économique faible, très défavorisé. Mais il y avait une belle richesse dans ce milieu, une culture d'entraide. Pour moi, la justice sociale était à la base de mes actions. Pour ce faire, le travail en collaboration avec le milieu était primordial. Comme enseignante, ouvrir la classe aux parents était chose courante. Puis, mon passage d'enseignante, à charger de cours à l'université et finalement à la direction d'une école, m'a offert un champ d'action pas mal plus vaste. Le concept d'école communautaire pouvait prendre tout son sens. Comme le souligne bien le proverbe africain, il faut tout un village pour éduquer un enfant. Depuis maintenant six ans, je travaille dans ce beau milieu milieu de Côte-Saint-Luc, milieu riche par sa diversité. Peu à peu, notre école a pris place en sa communauté. Pour moi, un enjeu de notre temps est le vivre ensemble en français. Comment préparer un citoyen du monde? Je crois en l'importance de créer un sentiment d'appartenance à son milieu. Le vivre ensemble au primaire permet à nos jeunes de trouver un espace pour se dire, prendre du recul pour mieux évaluer les propos de l'un et de l'autre, comprendre qui je suis, qui nous sommes, un nous nourri des apports de sa diversité. Vivre ensemble en français, c'est avoir du plaisir à savourer la culture en français. On n'apprend pas le français pour faire plaisir à son professeur ou à son parent, mais pour se faire plaisir. Pour y arriver, l'école se doit d'être ouverte à sa communauté. La culture est la clé d'une belle intégration. Dans cette médaille, il y a un peu de chaque personne qui m'aide à être une bonne personne. Mon fils, sa femme, mes bons amis, mes patrons, les membres du personnel de l'école, vous êtes avec moi, les membres de la communauté, les parents, mais surtout, et surtout, les enfants qui arrivent le matin à l'école heureux avec leurs petits yeux pétillants. Merci de contribuer à faire une différence dans la vie de la communauté de l'école des Amis du monde. Merci de faire une différence dans ma vie. Our second medal winner is surely no stranger to you. I'm so pleased to say that he's no stranger to me either. He's a gentleman who's matched his exemplary professional career with an equally impressive record of volunteer community service. He conceived, organized, and initiated Volunteer Citizens on Patrol, VCOPS, 
11 years ago. Makes a great t-shirt. VCOP members provide patrols in cars, on scooters, on bikes, with a view to assisting residents however possible. They help individual, individuals with safety and security matters and assist in crowd control at local events and emergencies. They take pride in helping fellow citizens. And that's a pride that our recipient has helped instill from the very beginning. This gentleman, and you're all wondering who he is, was actively involved in emergency medical services for over 30 years. Je crois qu'il euh, s'entendrait avec moi qu'un des moments marquants de son long mandat en tant que conseiller municipal à Côte-Saint-Luc a été en 1992 avec l'introduction de la première loi municipale au Canada obligeant le port du casque du vélo. Ce monsieur du tout temps résident de Côte-Saint-Luc est le directeur des affaires publiques et des communications au CIS du centre-ouest de l'île de Montréal. Il est aussi un ancien directeur général d'Alliance Québec, a job that was a major part of my own professional life. Ladies and gentlemen, a man who has given back so much to the community that he loves, a man who will surely continue to do so, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Glenn Nash. Merci beaucoup, David. Thank you so much. Merci tout le monde. Bonsoir. Distinguished member of the National Assembly and former members of the National Assembly, Mr. Mayors, my dear colleagues from Council, close by and neighboring, my dear friends and family. Most of you know that I've served in public office, well, nearly all of my adult life. And let me sum up this incredible journey in the form of my shift on duty. My shift begins fall of 1979. I'm a young first responder in the Coatsluke Emergency Measures Organization, dressed in a smart looking brown uniform, yellow stripe down the side of my pants. The alert tone rings and we spring into action, lights and siren blaring from our small red rescue fire truck. An elderly person has tumbled down the stairs at home. A car crashes into a light pole on Cavendish. Suddenly, a call for a cardiac arrest across the street. We respond to hundreds of emergencies on every street in Cote St. Luke, and that's just the early morning. I rise through the ranks of the EMO and the EMS, promoting citizen CPR training and pushing for automatic defibrillators in public buildings and public vehicles, relentlessly champion champ championing for recognition of paramedics across Quebec, and ad advocating for air ambulance helicopters for the outlying regions. It's a busy shift, and we're only in the mid-1980s. My uniform changes colors, so does the vehicle, as I find myself riding aboard yellow ambulances and doctor's cars with urgence santé, racing to life and death situations, performing CPR 125 times, bringing some people back to life, and even delivering a baby. What a privilege, what a responsibility, at a pretty young age too, to be in a position to make a profound difference in someone's life during their most highest moment of anxiety. My shift continues. It's 1990 and I'm elected as the youngest member of City Council. My first priority is to make cycling safer and Cote St. Luke adopts the first bicycle helmet bylaw in the entire country. I play a leading role during major floods, the infamous ice storm of 98, preparing for doomsday during Y2K. You remember year 2000. No rest on this patrol. It's the early 2000s and Anthony, Ruth, Mitch and I are up for the biggest challenge yet, to get our city back, to save our EMS, to keeping our police station and our fire stations from closure. It's time for a lunch break, when a great idea strikes me. It's 2005, Cote St. Luke is about to be back in our own hands again, and I decide we need to harness the energy of more volunteers to ensure Cote St. Luke's place as the safest community on the island of Montreal. We need to enlist more volunteers, retirees, a group of neighbors watching out for neighbors. After lunch, I set out on founding the Volunteer Citizens on Patrol organization. We launched on Canada Day 2006, now suited up in a bright orange polo top and in marked vans like the one right behind me, orange and white, scooters, bikes. We continue our patrol through the streets, 
in our parks, our municipal facilities. We stop to alert a resident that they forgot to close their garage door, a possible theft averted. We remind another to keep the emergency lane clear at the mall. We get the finger, but that's okay. <laughs> All in a day's volunteer work. An elderly couple thanks us for changing the battery in their smoke detector. We block a street from traffic and hold onlookers back as the fire department douses a house fire. Over to check on, on a home of vacationers. We then assist police in looking for a missing child and we reunite the frightened youngster with their relieved parents. We feel pride and satisfaction knowing we've helped. We've made a difference. We've given our time, but we've gained so much in return. My shift isn't quite done and yet another quick uniform change. This time for a two month stint as the mayor of Cote St. Luke in 2015. What was once just a dream actually became a reality. And as we head back to the station, which is right behind us here, to wrap up this shift today in 2018, I can see how my parents gave me the keys to these patrol vehicles for this mission to repair the world. So thank you, mom, who just celebrated her 90th birthday. And thank you, dad, who's four days shy of his 95th. Thank you for these important life lessons in public service and looking out for one's neighbors. These lessons were also fueled by my wife, Judy, who's always ready to give her utmost to her patients and to the community. And together we are handing over these keys to our children, Nicole, Natalie, and Jeremy. So I close by again thanking my wife and children because when my proverbial uniform went on, they knew that it meant I'd be away from the house again and again and yet again. Public service and long shifts do come at a high cost. My wife says this about me. My heart is in Cote St. Luke and Cote St. Luke is in my heart. I feel that way too, very much so, about our beautiful province and our amazing country. And I hope that one day my tour of duty will continue and my unquenchable need to repair the world will take off in some new direction to make this place the very best for all of us. So I thank you, David, I thank our former MNAs that are here tonight, Lawrence and Robert and Judge Marks who couldn't be with us. I thank you all. I thank our amazing volunteers in EMS, in VCOP, throughout Cote St. Luke for joining me on today's shift. I'm very appreciative that all of you are here this evening. Alors merci beaucoup et bonne soirée. Bravo, Glenn. What a colorful wardrobe this fellow has. <laughs> Our third Citizenship Medal recipient sadly receives this honor posthumously. But surely Jerry Weinstein is here with us in spirit, and a lively, warm, and determined spirit it is. Jerry Weinstein, que nous honorons de façon posthume avec ce prix, était un activiste communautaire authentique et désintéressé dans le bon sens du terme, qui remuait ciel et terre pour le bien des plus vulnérables. Jerry was instrumental in the development of the Neighborhood House, a 95-unit residence of affordable housing in Côte saint luc The residence that now bears his name, and quite rightly alongside that of Ted Greenfield, who's with us tonight, is an absolute model for fulfilling seniors' housing needs in a dignified and fulfilling manner, and that honors the energy and life that each of his residents, its residents continue to live by. Despite having lived with major health challenges for much of his adult life, which in and of itself was part of the inspirational lesson he gave to all of us, Jerry persevered as a longtime leader of B'nai B'rith and spearheaded the organization's successful efforts to create with our government support, I'm proud to note, a second senior's residence of some 129 units. Sadly, he left us before the groundbreaking ceremony last winter. The building is now very close to completion, and we'll all honor Jerry when that occasion comes very soon. Jerry was also a leader of the Knights of Pythias, a president of the Foundation for Children's Diseases, and a one-time chair of the Telethon of Stars. Ladies and gentlemen, to accept this most deserved award on behalf of his dear late dad, 
Please welcome Mr. Jeff Weinstein. David Birnbaum, worthy mayors, invited guests, friends. If my father was here today, he would accept this award. He would accept it on behalf of the thousands of volunteers who helped him achieve everything he had done. Never one to ask or seek the praise of others, he always felt the, the most important aspect of any team were its volunteers. It's these volunteers who share in, the re in this recognition. Yes, it took someone with a vision, an idea, a thought. However, it took people, other citizens, volunteers, to get things done. It was, and still is, those people who deserve these accolades. From the time he was, a young, he, he was young and organized other young men at the neighborhood house on Fletcher's Field into baseball and hockey leagues, to the years later when he oversaw similar leagues in Van Horn, Mackenzie King, and Coronation Parks in the Snowden area. Together with the help of members of the Knights of Pythias, it was his way of keeping more young men off the streets and giving them a good outlet to learn sportsmanship and working as a team. I wish I could list all the charities, events, projects that he either initiated or was asked to participate in, but I know I would do an injustice to all those I would miss out. His last completed project, I think the one that gave him the most satisfaction was B'nai B'rith House. He felt it was important that no senior should ever be put out because they were unable to pay rent, least of all a Holocaust survivor. He never allowed his failing health to deter him from attending meetings, visiting the house almost on a daily basis, participating at functions and helping those responsible to run the day-to-day -day operations. Once again, it was the volunteers who helped make the project a success. W without the aid of others, it would have never been realized. I would like to thank Ted and Eileen and their team for seeing the project to its completion. I know my father would have also liked to thank my cousins, our business partners, for affording him the time to spend on all his projects. Aaron and Milan, thank you. I know he taught us all about being active in our community and giving back. I'm sure he would be proud to see all of us continuing the work that he started. On behalf of my mother, Lynn, my sister, and myself, we would like to thank the government for its recognition and all the volunteers and all the citizens who helped my father realize all of his thoughts, dreams, and accomplishments. Thank you. Bon, il me reste une, une tâche plaisante avant de le faire à, à votre nom. I want to thank uh, my dear colleagues who I am so privileged to work with, Liz Prass, uh, Chris Savard, and Sophia Zuckelman for all their help in making this event happen. And to the mayor, to um, Harold Cammy, Daryl, the entire team from Cote St. Luke who uh, blesses us always with their support and their tremendous work. Thank you so much. Uh, before I get to my final task, um, let me uh, invite you to make sure you get on my uh, Facebook page tomorrow, at which time you will see a, a prepared video that I was privileged to do with the Premier of Quebec, who of course couldn't be with us tonight, uh, properly honoring all, all, all of our winners tonight as well. So please take a look at that tomorrow. We'll make sure each of the uh, laureates uh, obviously get to see that uh, very carefully as well. Bon, tonight is the fourth anniversary of our citizenship medal ceremonies. It's also the third anniversary of our Victor C. Goldblum Vivre Ensemble essay contest. We all miss Victor very much. Um, I feel so privileged to have considered him a, a mentor and a dear friend through many phases of my own life. Uh, but uh, I have some 33 million friends who were also touched by Victor's life. C'est des citoyens et citoyennes du Canada d'un bout du pays à l'autre. His contributions first as the first M&A for this riding uh, were only followed by endless milestones as Environment Minister, Canada's official language as Commissioner, a tireless bridge builder, a Jewish community leader, and a Montreal treasure. À son nom donc, j'invite chaque année maintenant les élèves du secondaire 4 aux écoles de Darcy McGee à proposer des textes sur la thème qui fait honneur à Victor, on va en convenir, de vivre ensemble. 
allow me to read uh, an excerpt, bilingual expert, excerpt, from our winning entry this year. Et je cite. De plus, nous devrions respecter les droits de l'humain dans toutes les situations et sans aucune exception. La solution à ce problème n'est pas de répondre à la, à la violence par la violence. In order to live together, the world must unite and live as a whole. In other words, we must work together to better ourselves and evolve. We must take into account all the external conflicts that set barriers in order to achieve this. End of quote. And this written by a secondary four student. The author of these words is a student at Ecole Maimonide. Mesdames et Messieurs, notre gagnant du concours Victor C. Goldblum, Vivre Ensemble pour 2018, Mademoiselle Sarah Bouzaglo. Bonjour tout le monde, bonne soirée. Et je veux prendre le temps pour remercier tout le monde pour m'avoir choisi pour ma rédaction. J'apprécie beaucoup. Euh, et oui, merci et bonne soirée. Merci beaucoup, bravo. bravo.